I'm talking about the next Supreme Court justice, born in the South Bronx, raised in a housing project by parents who came to New York from Puerto Rico during the Second World War. Father was a factory worker with a third grade education, didn't speak English. When Sonia was just nine, her father passed away. Her mother worked six days a week as a nurse to provide for Sonia and her brother, buying the only encyclopedias in the neighborhood, sending her children to Catholic school out of belief, out of a belief that with a good education here in America, all things are possible. <laughs> Sonia's Sotomayor's life is proof that all things are possible. And when she ascends those marble steps to assume her seat on the highest court of the land, America will take another important step towards realizing the ideal that's chiseled above its entrance. Equal justice under the law. So I'm, I'm inspired by her. I'm honored to nominate her, and I know that Harry Reid and others in the Senate will make sure that she is confirmed as our next Supreme Court Justice. And I know that because Harry has just as improbable a story, and so do I. And that's what, that's what politics should be about, remembering remembering that for a whole lot of folks, life isn't easy. They're not born into advantage. But what sets America apart is the fact that we can make of our lives what we will. Yes, we can. And that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing in Washington every day figuring out how can we give a helping hand to ordinary Americans, like Sonia Sotomayor's mother, like a young Harry Reid who needs a scholarship maybe, like, like a Barack Obama who, who, who might need that inspiring teacher in a school. And all in all, we're making progress on the important issues of the day, the issues that are going to matter not just for this generation but for the next generation. I'm pleased with how far we've come, but I'm not satisfied. I'm confident in the future, but I'm not content. Not when there are workers out there still out of a job and families who still can't pay their bills. Not when there are too many Americans who can't afford health care and so many of our kids being left behind. Not when we're not leading the world in developing the new energy sources of the 21st century. We have come a long way. We can see the light on the horizon, but we've got a much longer journey ahead. And that's why all of you are here tonight. That's why you're digging deep. That's why I know you're going to make those phone calls and knock on those doors and get to the polls again next November so that we make sure that Harry Reid continues his devoted service to this great state. And that's why I'm here tonight, because I can't bring the change I promised all by myself. I can't rebuild an economy by myself. I can't reform our health care system and education systems and preserve our environment and keep our nation safe all alone. That's not how it works. I need partners in Congress, leaders who are determined to make a difference for the folks they represent. And right now, more than ever before, we need their help. America needs their help. We need their help to build schools that meet our standards and close the achievement gap and prepare our kids for the challenges of the 21st century, reward teachers for performance and give them new pathways for advancement. We need their help to reach the goal I've set for higher education in this country that by 2020, America will once again have the highest proportion of college graduates in the world. We need their help to pass a comprehensive energy and climate bill that will finally reduce our dangerous dependence on foreign oil, offer new energy incentives to reduce the pollution that threatens our health and our climate. We need a plan that will create millions of new jobs 
producing wind turbines and solar panels like you're doing right here in Nevada. Because the nation that leads the 21st century in clean energy, that nation will lead in the global economy. America can and must be that nation. We need help to create a 21st century health care system that cut costs for families and businesses across America. And working with Harry Reid and other members of Congress, we are going to do everything we can to achieve comprehensive health care reform by the end of this year. We've been waiting too long. We're going to make it happen this year. And finally, even as we do all this, we need to restore fiscal discipline in Washington so we don't leave our children and grandchildren with a mountain of debt. Already my administration's identified more than 100 government programs that we can reduce or eliminate. They're not working the way they should. That'll save taxpayers nearly $17 billion next year alone. We're going through the budget line by line, looking for more places where we can shift dollars from things that don't work to things that do. You know, we're living through extraordinary times. We didn't ask for the challenges that we face, but we are determined to answer the call, to meet those challenges, to cast aside the old arguments and overcome the stubborn divisions and move forward as one people and one nation. It won't be easy, Nevada. There will be setbacks, Las Vegas. It will take time, but I promise you, I promise you, I'll always tell you the truth about the challenges we face. I'll always tell you the truth about the steps we're taking to meet them. I will continue to measure my progress by the progress that the American people see in their own lives. And so if you stand with me, if you stand with Harry Reid, I know that years from now we will look back on this time, at this moment, and say that's when the American people came together to reclaim their future, to write the next great chapter of the American story. We can only do it with Harry Reid, and I can only do it with you, the people of Las Vegas, the people of Nevada, the people of America. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you.